drugs. Oh, another one. That's the twelfth case this week. This is from a special consignment. Mm. A dirty one. Don't they all? Now, this one's very special. It's a killer. Now, she's fortunate she had the accident. We'll save her. But when the distribution of this stuff really gets underway, there'll be hundreds, maybe thousands. They won't be so lucky. game of cards. But for Richard Barrett and Sharon McCready, even this becomes a test. A test of extrasensory perception. Just another one of the superhuman qualities endowed to the champions when they crashed in the snows of Tibet and encountered the fabulous people of a lost civilization. Now, as operators of the International Agency of Nemesis, they are able to use those powers to their best advantage as the champions of law and order and justice. Well, anyway, Craig, that's the general picture. When will we be leaving? No, I'll give you the details when they're all together. Sharon and Richard should be in my office by now. Evening, Sharon. Evening, Richard. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I'll come to the point right away because there's not a great deal of time. Now, Sharon. You and Craig will be flying to London tonight. Here are your plane tickets. Tonight? Yep. Richard, you'll join them just as soon as I can spare you. Why the urgency, sir? Narcotics. But drug traffic is worldwide. Why London? Because there have been an alarming number of deaths there, all attributed to the same drug. A huge consignment of the stuff has been smuggled into the country, which contain impurities and are lethal. But why us? Well, I'll tell you. The organization behind drug smuggling is on a vast international scale. The profits run into millions. Well, the racket has got to be smashed. This may sound like an understatement, but this is a big job. Where do you intend to start? Well, the first link in the chain is an unfortunate girl called Jane Purcell, a drug addict. Can I get you anything, miss? Yes! You can unlock this door and stop spying on me! I'm sorry, miss. I'm only carrying out your father's orders. <laughs> what? Spied on! And now I'm locked in like a criminal! I go mad! I can't stand it! <laughs>
He's ready. Now, you won't have any trouble with the girl. But if you make contact with that pusher, you be careful, OK? Because it could be dangerous. Now, look, Sharon, we can't afford to lose this guy. You've got to try and stick this gadget on him. It lets off a piercing squeal that can be heard three blocks away. But it can't be heard by the normal human ear because its frequency is too high. He won't be able to hear it, but we will. Go ahead, try it. Press the button. All right, all right. Turn it off, turn it off. Good, isn't it? A scream. You just made it. Yes, I'm sorry I'm late. The flight was delayed. I got your message as soon as I checked in. So that's her place. Yep. How are things developing? No joy so far. She's desperate. She's got 48 hours. The plan's already gone into action. Governor said to collect. Very well, young man. Excuse me. All right, my lad. You can run along. It's up to you now, McCready. Well, wish me luck. Yeah, good luck. to report what you got in that bag. All right. What is it? Mm. 
must help me. I'm desperate. Help you? I've just arrived in London. I've got no contacts here. Contacts? Oh, stop playing games with me. When I saw you in the street just now, I thought you were one of us. When I saw you at that jewelry counter lifting something, I knew it. I don't understand a word. Tell me how I can make a contact. I'll pay for us both. Shh. All right. Give me the money, and I'll go and collect the stuff. I'm sorry. I'll never see you again. You take me to your man. He won't like it. I don't care if he... All right, all right. I'll try. Will you pull up around this next corner? Hello. What a nice surprise. Can you give me a lift? Is this her? She's all right. All right. Get it out. Sorry, baby. Short rations. Oh, what's the use of that? You said you'd give me Shut up. Call me in a couple of hours. I might be able to get you some more. Hear it? A sort of high-pitched bleeping sound. Is that your gadget? That's it. The bike it is. Me. I'm not sharing this little lot with you. No, stop! Sharon. Well? He's on his way to contact his supplier. Just a moment. You've done a wonderful job, but it's our turn now. But I, I want to... in the car. back of the buildings. They seem to be heading in this direction. It's moving awful fast. It'll most probably be a car.
Ah, oh, sequence change you want, don't you? Ah, oh, thank you, sir. There we are, love. Bye bye. That's it. Oh, what a horrible noise! I don't know what's got into those animals. Ah, well, sorry to keep you waiting, sir. There we are. Come along now, peanuts. Feed your nearest relations. Come along now, peanuts. Come on, get your peanuts here. Six for the bag. The bleep's fading. Batteries run down. All fresh, six for the bag. Lovely peanuts, all your life. Did he make contact? He bought some peanuts. He doesn't look like an animal lover to me. Could be the peanut man, I suppose. One bag? All right. All change, don't you? There we are, sir. Six for the change. Thank you. Bye-bye, sonny. Peanuts! Peanuts! Come on! You two stay with that one. I'll keep up with the peanut vendor. Come on, now! Well, that's his pet, all right. What do you think? It must be the peanut man. Why so sure? Well, why buy peanuts if you don't eat them? Yeah, or feed them to the animals. Mm, he didn't either. If only I could get a look inside that packet. Let's go try. Any idea how we get him out of there? I could phone him. Tell him I want to do more business. Sixpence. There's a phone box around the corner. Underground. Good. Don't stay long in there. He doesn't hang around.
Welcome home. What's your game? Oh, just taking a look around. Get out. Aren't you going to send for the police? What do you want? Who sent you? I just like peanuts. Get out. No police. No police. By the way. Yeah? That's Dale. So you want to play it rough, eh? Well, I can play it that way, too. Hello, Jimmy? Yes, yeah, Frank. How are you? Good. Listen, I've got a fellow over here who thinks he's a bit of a villain. Yeah, you better come over and bring Lenny with you. A couple of right. Hard. Nuts. It's going to be a lovely day. Well, I know. It was a lousy night. Where were you? I left a message for you at midnight. Chasing a bag of peanuts. You what? You're right. That man is a drug distributor. Oh, well, that's another step up the ladder. What's he been up to? Haven't seen him since 10 o'clock last night. Well, you go off and get some breakfast. Oh, I needed that. Hey, that was mine. Hey, Richard, look. That's him. Peanut vendor stopped at the same garage last night on his way home. And that's the same girl he talked to as well. She could be part of the setup too. Yeah. Boy, I'd love to get a look underneath that car. No, there isn't time, Craig. Why? Well, according to the papers this morning, a couple of kids have already died from these drugs. We're gonna have to take a shortcut. Oh. We're gonna have to assume that she is in on the deal. We trail around after her and let her know that we're onto her. She lets it leak back to the organization. We wait for them to make the next move. Yeah, like shooting us in the back. No, they won't do that until they know who we are and how much we know. Well, they might have set a trap for us. Yeah, that's right. They set a trap for us, we walk into it. That's the shortcut.
That's a pretty classy apartment building for a car greaser. Yeah. Hey, which uh, one of us is going in? Oh, no, no, no. This kind of girl needs special handling. Yeah, I know. She'd be suspicious of all kinds of characters. We'll wait here till she comes out. Yes, but which one of us? We'll toss. Heads. What a pleasant surprise. Who are you? Oh, you haven't forgotten me so soon, surely. Oh, come on. Hey, come back here. Come back. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Stop, thief. <laughs> what the devil are you doing, you knucklehead? <laughs> Did you hear me? I said stop. <laughs> You're not supposed to catch me. <laughs> All right. Now you can make this look good. Ooh, not that good, you. <laughs> you. Oh. A little slow with my left. Oh, you're hurt. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm sorry that the catch is broken. I'll let you know about my nose later. That's all right. I better get you to a doctor. No, no, no. We can't go to a doctor. We gotta go to the police. Police! Police! police. Hey, listen, I don't want to get involved. But you are involved. That guy may have a record. He tried to rob you. Police! No, listen, come get here. The... Look, why don't you come up to my place? What? Well, I mean, you could use a drink, and I really don't want to get involved. I mean, no harm's been done, so what do you say? I know that guy's type. Work shy, goes around preying on women. How do you feel? A lot better now. Oh, <laughs> terribly sorry. Well, I don't need sympathy. Oh, really? Why not? Well, it's a lucky break. Oh, yes? I just happen to be alone for the weekend, and I'm going to take you out. Oh, that's very kind of you, but I'm afraid I'm not free. You're missing a very good party. No. Why, does the boyfriend have you watched? What boyfriend? Well... I'll fix you your drink. Help yourself. Oh, thanks very much. Excuse me a minute. Sure. still stand for tonight. You mean you change your mind? That's terrific. Well, I'll have to go and make a phone call first. Yeah, you do that. Give the fellow the bad news. Okay. Okay. Numbers X directory unlisted. But you must have the address. They're not for publication, sir. Well, can't you give it to me? Is it urgent? <laughs> yes, it is most important. I'm sorry, sir, but it's really against. <sighs> All right, yes. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry, sir. I understand. Thank you. Ooh. What's up? Oh, she says she's not allowed to give the address because it's unlisted. Well, why don't we ring Scotland Yard? No, Tremaine wants it off the record. Well, let's just dial it. Never thought of that. Dial it, she says. Just dial it. That might well work, you know. He might just be stupid enough to give his own name. This is the arch-villain speaking. Addicts are not. I tell you what, why don't you be my secretary? Yes? Hello? Would you hold the line a moment, please? I have a call for you. Hello? Yes? Who is that? 
Yeah, I'm terribly sorry. I've got a couple of incoming calls here. Who is that? Who do you want, sir? Is that Vincent 1845? 1485, sir. I'm afraid you have the wrong number. Yeah, yeah I'm terribly sorry. Oh, he's no fool. Well, we're back where we started. Why don't we make it a long distance call? Long distance? Well, that would hold him. Then perhaps we might hear something that would give us an idea of where the place is. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes, we'll call on the hour. Why on the hour? Ah. Is that Vincent 1485? Yes. Hold the line, please. I have a call from Paris for you. Uh, who is calling? I'll ask Paris. Just one moment. Hello? Hello? I'm sorry, Paris says there's a delay. We'll call you back. What was that roaring sound? The coal man. Vincent number pinpoints Belgravia. Right. But it's not on a main bus route, just near one. And pneumatic drills, that means there are roadworks nearby. I think the house was in a square. Why? Well, there were trees. Trees? The bird song. Yeah. And an, an hour chime nearby, one minute late. A D bell. I think it was slightly flat. And then, of course, there's the coal man. The coal man is littering all over Belgravia. Not on a Saturday afternoon. Clever. Let's go out there and take a look. Marvellous. Now, this is the one. You are really going to enjoy this. I'm sorry, I don't seem to have had much appetite till now. Well, look. Thank you. Why don't you relax? We've had a lovely meal. Oh, no. Oh, what? Well, the man that I was meant to see tonight, he's just walked in. Really? And I told him I was going to bed with a cold. With a cold? Leave me, my dear. You're feeling better. Much better, thank you. I'm glad you made such a quick recovery. Oh, Craig Sterling, let me introduce Walter Pelham. Mr. Sterling, this is a pleasure. Mr. Pelham, may I join you for a moment? Oh, uh, please do. Would you, uh, would you like a drink? Thank you. He has expensive tastes, my dear. You interest me, Mr. Sterling. Really? Why? I'm always interested in any friend of Sandra's. A fatherly interest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose you could call it that. How long have you known Mr. Sterling, my dear? Walter, shouldn't you join your friends? I'll tell you what. When you've finished, you must join me. We'll all go on for a drink together. No, Walter. But I insist. Yeah. Mr. Sterling, no, no, don't get up, Sandra. Terribly sorry about that. Do we have to go? Well, I really don't want to offend him. You seem to have done that already. We must go. Well... Please. You'll make things a lot easier for me. Okay. Coal was delivered across the square this afternoon. That's my flat tea bell. And there's a bus route at the end of the street, and the main road is under repair. Don't forget the trees. Look, Richard.
you see, Craig? Just stay with him. He's walking straight into a trap. Ah, he knows what he's doing. Good evening, sir. Where is he? He's in the library, sir. Higgs. Higgs, have you seen this gentleman before? Yes, sir. I saw him once at the zoo and once at the top of the mews. Thank you, Higgs. That is all. You may go. Yes, and you, Miss Hurst. Good night, sir. And goodbye to you, Craig. Oh, Higgs, tell Bates I won't need the car again tonight. That's yes, so. Hey, wait a minute. We're all going to have a drink, right? Where... Easy now. I think it's time we had a little talk, Mr. Sterling. Will you join me in a nightcap? It seems we have areas of common interest. Although exactly what your interest is in my affairs, I have yet to discover. Diplomatic plates, huh? That makes sense. Good evening. So, this is the man. Oh, your house is next door to their embassy. Oh, neighbors, that's nice. All right, Sterling, for whom are you working? Me, I'm just around for kicks. I mean... Well, we can arrange that, too. Don't tell me you boys are about to abuse your diplomatic privileges. That depends on you. Let me see if I got this straight. The narcotics comes into the country in your diplomatic bag. You bring it to the garage here and then pass it along to Pelham, right? Steady, boy. Then, he takes his car to the garage under the pretext of having it greased. Whereupon your sub-agents do exactly the same thing at exactly the same garage. They take the dope out from under his car and conceal it under yours, right? That's very good. All right, go ahead. Tell us who you're working for. Right? Now be sensible. You're going to tell us sooner or later, so why not now? Right.
I'm sure there's an old saying, Mr. Pelham, that rats shouldn't play with traps. A very excellent job of work. Thank you. And the government in question are more than delighted with the results. It must have been quite a shock to the ambassador to find out how some members of his staff were making their thin money. But it was very neatly nipped in the bud. And yet something seems to be troubling you. Hmm? No, no, no. Um, it's just that there seem to be some gaps in your report. For example, when you followed that man to the um, zoo, you said you lost him, but you failed to mention how you picked up his trail again. Sir, you know how I feel about paperwork. Yeah, it's just the way it's written up. I mean, when you're on a case, you can't give an accurate report. Uh, I mean, it's impossible to list everything Heavens, out. look at the time. We promised to meet old, uh, didn't we? Certainly. You know, Mr... Oh, yes, Will yes, you yes, excuse yes. us, sir? Please, kindly. Thank you. The door, sir? Thank you, sir. Excuse us, sir.